what's up guys hotjar frontier back at it again with another video and in this video guys i'm excited to show you my going second pure horse build now i know a lot of people are saying you should run it with tickle limits or uh, therion or uh, runic or other variants but personally i want to test the pure variant first and just so you guys know this is our 1.0 build pretty much i have a lot of cards that i still need to add into the deck so keep that in mind so starting off with our horse cards we play three m seti we run three of the Dia Mutef, if I said that correctly. We play three Happy, or Happy, however you guys want to say it. And we play three of Protection of Horus. So these Horus monsters are absolutely crazy. This card will actually add your King Sark from your deck to your hand by sending itself in another card in your hand. So you have another Horus monster, you can go ahead and send that if you want to. Plus, they have uh, second effects where if your opponent tries to get rid of something else, they can actually activate based on that so it's really cool this card can send a card on the field to the grave uh, this one actually gains 1200 attack for the uh, number of horse monsters you control in your field and if your opponent again sends something else you can go ahead and draw cards based on the amount of horse monsters you control the happy is really good because this card can actually add you back cards from your graveyard or banish zone to your hand which is really nice if it's uh, another card is messed with and then the protection of a uh, horus this card's cool because this card will actually um, protect you from attacks that turn, plus your opponent cannot target your horse monsters with effects. So, so next up we run, of course, three King Sark. This card's absolutely insane too because this card will go ahead and protect your horse monsters from card effects that do not target them. So this plus protector, it's kind of crazy. Second of all, you can go ahead and send a card from your hand to the graveyard and send a horse monster from the deck to the graveyard. So you can go ahead and that's another way to get your horse monsters in the grave to special summon them. And the next effect, it's really cool because if you battle an opponent's monster, you can go ahead and send that opponent's monster to grave. And finally, guys, for the last two cards for the horse uh, core, we play two of the Canopic Protector. So this card is pretty good too. It's uh, good for your horse monsters. What it does is, once per train, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can go ahead and special summon a horse monster from the hand or graveyard, but you cannot do that for the rest of the turn. You can't summon the same one for the rest of the turn. My apologies, but yeah, this card is pretty cool. And uh, there is a lot of milling. So if this card gets sent to grave by like, like that way, you can go ahead and just set it. The only thing is uh, once it leaves the field, it has to be banished. So something to remember, but it's a very good card nonetheless. So before we get into our hand trap lineup, I'm gonna show you guys a few monsters we still play for the deck. We play two Lava Golem, really good going second, of course. And we run three Kashira Fenrir. So pretty self-explanatory good going first and second and has another utility i'll show you guys very soon but let's get into our hand trap lineup so we run three ash blossom joy spring and three nimbiru plus two infinite impermanence so really good for the strategy and again um i'll show you guys when i get to the extra deck why i play certain cards but uh going on to the rest of the deck going on to the spells we play three trade in really good to draw cards plus we can go ahead and send one of our uh, level eights to grave so good utility that way if we uh can't really use the lava goal we can send it that way too just to get you know a little bit of benefit off of it and uh next up we have the three triple tactic talents now i would love to play thrust in this deck i just need to get some but <laughs> it's still a good card it does everything you know change apart uh pot of greed everything right so not a bad card to have and we have the one called by the grave so always have the one of <laughs> and uh finally guys for the trap cards i play three there can only be one now you might be saying this is going second why am i running uh there can only be one well you could put in the side uh, theoretically but if you go first your opponent makes you go first this card is still amazing to have plus if you guys don't know all of the horse monsters are different types and it's absolutely amazing so moving on to the extra deck i'm going to show you guys what we have there's definitely a lot of improvements i want to make but let me show you guys what i'm working with so we have the one zombie vampire amazing to mill cards from your deck and your opponent's deck disrupt their strategy plus you can go ahead and uh, hopefully mill some horus cards which is really good moving on we have one dingirsu really nice to have solid rank eight same thing with the hope harbinger same thing pretty solid right we have the 68 seraphond really good to uh, stop your opponent from interacting with the graveyard we have the number 23 lancelot now this card's kind of like uh, i have to put something else in there too but 
I would love to run the uh, Photon Lord, but unfortunately, I'm waiting for the reprint. And same thing with the Coach King. Cannot wait for that reprint, but it's a solid-ish uh, rank 8 to have in the deck. Now for our FTK strategy, of course, we're running the Dragoobion and the 100. So really two, uh, two good cards to have because, again, this is going second. And uh, these cards are definitely necessary for the deck. Now for our next set of cards, we are, of course, playing Zeus. And with Zeus, we're actually playing two rank up XYZ monsters to kind of bump up Zeus. Really nice to have uh, in this deck. So we do actually play one synchro monster in this entire build, and that monster is Veteranator Fleur. And this card's amazing, and you guys already know, but you can make this with Fenrir plus Ash Blossom. I was considering other options, like level two tuners, like the Plex for a Zombie, uh, Soul Synchron, or Chandra the Waning Moon. But ultimately, I wanna ask you guys, is it worth it? Should I try adding those in, or just take Veteranator out? Let me know down below in the comment section. Now moving on to our links, we actually play one Dark the Dark Charmer. And this card's cool because this can actually take our opponent's Little Knight or any Dark Monster, of course. We have the Oster for potential Fenrir. We have Axis Code Talker, FTK. And of course, Underworld Goddess because we play so many horse monsters that it's pretty easy to make. So this is our extra deck for the pure horse going second strategy. Let me go ahead and show you guys my side deck. For the side deck, we're running three copies of Droll and Lockbird, one Archfiend Eccentric, two copies of Cosmic Cyclone, with the one copy of Duster. And for the final spells, we're running three copies of Forbidden Drip. Now moving on to the trap cards, we're running two copies of D-Barrier, because we're gonna use and abuse this until Konami advances, of course. And finally, guys, the final traps are evenly matched. Looks like that's the end of our video for Going Second Pure Horus. If you guys liked the video, make sure you give it a huge like. Comment down below, do you guys agree with our pure variant? Or would you go ahead and mix it with something? Let me know down below. And of course, what cards we can add in and take out. And if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you're updated the morning upload new videos. But guys, that's it for me. Hope you have a great rest of your day or night. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.